Welcome back to JB Reviews. Today, we are doing a video on making a U-turn with the GMC. I've done this with the Ram, I've done this with Ford. I've kind of done it with the GMC in the past, but we're gonna make a full U-turn. I'm not even gonna look back. This could go horribly wrong. But now, here is a cold startup for the GMC. Sucker is dirty. not bad so this truck starts up pretty darn quick uh the ram took probably like maybe 15 to 30 seconds but these still have glow plugs and ram has a grid heater i didn't even have it plugged in either but yeah let me go ahead and drive it so we can get this bad boy ready to go i don't know when i'm going to post my videos but if i still have my ram mega cab i would not be able to fit the truck on this side of the garage and if it did fit i would have to take the hitch off for sure but we are pretty much going to be moving our rv back on the side of the house so i figured before we do that we do this quick test before we do it because i don't want to have to keep moving it now you can see down there i have my westinghouse generator it is not loud at all now, the reason why I'm doing this is because my RV batteries are just dying quickly. There's nothing hooked up to the RV, and yet they're still dying really fast. Don't know why. I have dual batteries, and I literally had this thing plugged into the generator for like probably like eight hours the last few days, like probably within two day spans, and nothing's on inside, but they just keep dying. So, oh, always something, unfortunately. But before we tow, it's really cold. So I wanna make sure we get this bad boy up to operating temperature. It's 30 degrees outside. And so I wanted to at least be at least at, what is that, 150? And then we can start towing. I need to find some good places to go off road. Oh, wow. Check this out. Is that truck towing that RV? I think it is. Wow. Interesting. I wonder if he tows RVs for a living. But yeah, like I said, we're going to go down the road here. I'll probably drive for like maybe five minutes and then that should be good enough to get it heated up. And then we'll hook up the RV and then we'll make that U-turn. And just like that, we are nice and warm. We're actually at 210, so we're good. That's operating temperature. I'm going to drop the tailgate. Oh, I forget. With GM, you have to hold it. Completely out of air. You know what's strange? We took a lot of stuff out of the RV and the truck is definitely in the same position. So moving all the weight out of the RV is pretty much making the truck squat about the same. So really quickly, if you're new to my channel, I do have a Reese Goose box now. If you want to make a 90 degree turn with this pin box, you would have to have a GMC truck and you would have to have this type of cap design because depending on the RV, it could actually come out forward because you can see right here. You see how much space I have from where the cap pretty much starts and where the uh, pin box is. 
and then you see how this slants down a little bit as well so this does provide me to be able to make a 90 degree turn too one thing you also have to keep in mind is with this reese goose box it does have an airbag so depending on how much air you put in it this could also affect your clearance so the way that gm built this truck they put the uh prep package behind the axle and so you're able to have a little bit more clearance between your truck and your rv So the only thing I would recommend if you are going to do this with the gooseneck, you are going to have to get longer chains. Now my chains, I probably have just enough to maybe turn in a little bit more, but that's it. But if you need to like really do a U-turn, like on a very small road, you're going to need some longer chains because you could probably jackknife it. Now this does have a jackknife alert, so here's what I'm going to do. Let's see if we can make it do it. All right. Ooh, this makes me nervous. Okay. <laughs> oh. You were like two inches. What makes me nervous too is this part. But I guess. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that is. So you don't have much room, but yeah, you could literally make a 90 degree turn. Now, the only thing I'll say is you cannot rock this trailer. If you rock it, it's probably gonna hit because this Grease Goose Box has an airbag and if you air it down, it will drop the RV down too, which will make it closer to the uh, cab of the truck. So yeah, I have to be really careful backing in. But let's go back to one last time. This is clearly a 90 degree turn. I still have space. I mean, these are good enough for this, but I still get more ones if they're available. But look at the cab. It's clearly a 90 degree turn. Clearly.
That's crazy. Get it from this angle. I want to see how it looks when it's turning in. I'm going really slow. sad when the day comes when I have to give up this pickup because this is the only one that can make a 90 return with my setup. I can't do it with a Ford. I can't do it with my Ram. Um, I do know that Gen Y just came out with a plate that will drop the fifth wheel back some, but that might make it too close to the tailgate. So, and it's really expensive. It's like 400 bucks. So if I were to use that, I probably would have to get a Gen Y pin box too, because the Reese Goose box might be too far back. But hope the video was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can literally get a jackknife. Actually, we didn't, I didn't see an indicator go off. Um, I did try, I mean, I was pretty close and I didn't want to get any closer than that. So hey, maybe in the future before I get with the truck, I will try to jackknife it and see if that alert will pop up.